All right, this is going to be my first of several videos on factoring quadratics. So what you have here is a quadratic trinomial, and uh, we're to factor that. Now what factoring means is basically doing multiplication in reverse. So we want to find two polynomials that multiply together to give you n squared minus 5n minus 24. Now it might seem a little uh, awkward to, uh, for me to be teaching it in this way, um, but I'm going to go ahead and show you the answer, and then we're going to work backwards to see how you think through the problem to get to that answer. So, uh, again, kind of spoiling the surprise here, the answer happens to be uh, n plus 3 multiplied by n minus 8. Now, that obviously doesn't help you learn anything, me just telling you what the answer is, but uh, it's kind of necessary uh, so that we can work backwards in a moment. If you think about how to multiply these two linear binomials together uh, using the distributive property, you would draw that arrow in blue, n times n. That would give you n squared. Now I'm going to do this uh, not in the usual order that you do the distributive property. I'm going to go ahead uh, and do the last arrow that you typically draw in red. 3 times negative 8 is negative 24. And then, again, using the distributive property, in green, you would have two more arrows. And we would have to draw those from 3 to n, and from n to negative 8. Now, it doesn't matter what order you evaluate these in. Um, I call this uh, long arrow the outside arrow because it connects the outside terms of the parenthesis or in the two binomials. n times negative 8 is negative 8n. And then I call this small arrow the inside two terms. 3 times n is plus 3n. And now if you combine the two like terms that are in the middle, negative 8n and positive 3n, we have n squared minus 5n minus 24. And you can see that is where we started. So I did factor this correctly. I told you I was going to just tell you what the answer was. So the question is, uh, if you don't know that this is the correct answer, well, how do you get there? And unfortunately, this ends up taking a lot of practice. So here's your thought process. Now I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave this over here. Um, anytime we're looking at the other work that I show you, just pretend that this is not there. So we have n squared minus 5n minus 24. Due to experience in multiplying linear binomials, you know that a quadratic trinomial might factor into two linear binomials. So what you do is you draw the parenthesis for the two linear binomials. And we're going to treat this as a fill-in-the-blank problem. So uh, I'm going to color code this. We have the first blank in each linear binomial. I'm put, going to put that in blue. And these two blanks are going to have to multiply together to give you n squared. And then in red, the second two blanks are going to have to multiply together to give you negative 24. So basically we treat this as a trial and error process. Now if you ask somebody else for help or you think it's unusual to be learning something in math uh, via trial and error, which I typically don't like, there is a step-by-step -step procedure for factoring. And I'm going to teach that to you uh, next week. However, uh, after you learn that step-by-step -step procedure, the way people actually do factoring is by trial and error and mental math. So uh, just keep that in mind. All right, so this blue blank multiplied by this blue blank has to be n squared. And remember, these factors are linear, so they're both first power, which means there's only one possibility, n times n. And now for the red blanks, they have to multiply together to give me negative 24. So unfortunately, there's lots of possibilities. There are lots of factor pairs that multiply to give you negative 24. Uh, so I'm going to get this problem wrong on purpose. 
So if I were to just guess at random, let's see, I need two numbers that multiply to get a negative 24. Well, how, how about minus 12 and plus 2? Negative 12 times 2 is negative 24. So how are you to know uh, that this is the incorrect answer? And the key, if you go to the thought bubble, which we're pretending right now and can't see, the key is the other two arrows of the distributive property. Notice n times n is this top arrow. 3 times negative 8, which we know is correct, is the red arrow. And that's how I've color coded these blanks. But I haven't considered the arrows in green, what I called the outside and the inside arrows. So we're going to have to consider those. In my supposed answer, I have this outside arrow and I have this inside arrow. If I multiply these out, on the outside I have n times 2, which is 2n. In my inside arrow, I have negative 12 times n, which is negative 12n. And if you combine these two linear terms, negative 12 plus 2, well that would be negative 10n. And that's not what my problem has. My problem originally has negative 5n. So it's back to the drawing board. I have to test some other possibility. I need two numbers that multiply together to give me negative 24. But at the same time, I can juggle uh, these outside and inside terms to get negative 5n in the middle. And as it turns out, and you will come to this through trial and error, if you put a plus 3 and a minus 8, that will do the trick. So let's test it. The outside two terms, we have negative 8n. The inside two terms, we have positive 3n. And 3n minus 8n. That is the negative 5n that we wanted in the middle. So you literally, by trial and error, doing a little bit of mental math, um, you test to see that the blue blanks do what you want, the red blanks do what you want, but it's juggling the outside and the inside terms to get the correct middle term. That's the problem with factoring. So let's do another example of this. So notice this problem is a little bit different. Instead of just a variable squared, we have 2 r squared. But by experience, you know that a quadratic trinomial often factors into two linear binomials. And I'll try to color code this in the same way. Blue times blue is blue. And then red times red is red, but we're going to have to juggle, and through trial and error, test the outside and the inside terms to see if we get the correct middle term. So um, luckily, 2r squared, well 2 is a prime number, so the only possibilities that we have for the blue blanks are 2r times r. But we have lots of possibilities for the red blanks. And again, this is trial and error, mental math. Actually write this down lightly in pencil. Uh, have yourself a good eraser. Uh, and you have to practice this uh, a great many times. Now this video is already getting a little long. I'm going to skip to what happens to be the correct combination. Uh, we have 7 times 9. So let's check. In the blue blanks, 2r times r is 2r squared. In the red blanks, 7 times 9 is 63. But you have to test the outside and the inside to see if you get the correct middle term. So on the outside, we have 2r times 9, which is 18r. On the inside, you have 7 times r, which is 7r. And if you combine these linear terms, 7 plus 18, well, that is 25r. You get what you wanted. So I know this is the correct factorization. 
If I had gotten anything other than 25R, it would be back to the drawing board. So this is another example of how to factor. Let's do uh, one more. And I'm going to keep my color coding, so give me a moment to erase. So let's see how we can make this uh, uh, just a little bit more difficult. And uh, this problem is definitely more difficult. And what makes this more difficult, if you look carefully, the first uh, term, 9R, or sorry, 9N squared, the blue blanks have to multiply to give you 9N squared. So we have two possibilities. It could be 3N multiplied by 3N, or it could be 9N multiplied by 1N. So you're going to have to juggle those two possibilities with, in red, the various possibilities to multiply to get 12, which would be 2 times 6, 4 times 3, 12 times 1. Um, so again, this is a bit more difficult. In the interest of time, I'm going to skip to the uh, what happens to be the answer. But um, when you are doing these yourself, actually write it out in pencil. Worst case scenario, you can take a guess, but most people typically they do a little bit of mental math along the way. Um, the answer here happens to be n minus 3 and 9n minus 4. Now realize you can do some logical thinking along the way. You know that the two red blanks have to multiply to give you positive 12. Well, that means either both of these numbers are negative or both of these numbers are positive because that's the only way you can multiply to get a positive. However, when you combine the outside and the inside terms, you have to get negative 31 in. So if you need to get negative ins, and these two blanks are either both, both positive or both negative, well, you know they both have to be negative. So let's test this answer on the outside two terms. I'll switch to green you get negative 4n. On the inside two terms, you get negative 27n. And when you combine those, you see that you do get uh, the negative 31n that you needed. So I know that this is the correct uh, combination. And if I had gotten anything else, I'd have to start over, try again, um, sort of uh, use the mental math I've been doing in my head along the way to adjust my answers uh, as I think might be appropriate. Anyway, factoring is one of those skills you're never going to get away from. It shows up all the time in all of your math classes. Uh, and at the end of the day, even though I said there is a step-by-step -step procedure for factoring, which I will teach you, what everybody does after, or in this case before you learn that step-by-step -step procedure, you have to get comfortable with, the, with doing this mentally, doing a little bit of trial and error. Now don't feel too bad if you're a little bit slow at the beginning. Uh, if you make these numbers large enough, computers have trouble factoring. And I mean that quite literally. Now the numbers have to be very, very, very large. They might need a couple hundred digits. Um, but even then, a computer, as fast as they are, will have trouble factoring. So don't feel bad. Just get a lot of practice, and this is something you're going to see a whole lot. Anyway, hope this video helped. There will be more videos on factoring coming up.